Thank you, Charles, for uh, accepting uh, uh, my email and having this conversation here today to talk about the topic uh, to visit your instructor and to communicate with them during the semester. So my first question for you today is, um, why is it important for the student to visit their instructor during their office hours and at least making a visit or talking to them during the semester? Okay, so it's important to understand that that we offer a kind of education. It is, uh, it is specific and it, it, for many students it's quite different than they may be used to. Uh, that includes uh, conceptual thinking. So uh, many school systems will train you to memorize things and then just tell me that you've memorized it. Whereas uh, what in Europe, North America and increasingly in Japan we offer is, is a comprehension about what's going on, understanding why not understanding what. That for many students is a very different way of thinking and one of the ways that we we create a measure to understand whether students are understanding this is to be as accessible as possible. So some uh, faculty members will have office hours. Um, I have office hours but I also explain to students that I will arrange other times to meet with them uh, based on when it fits within our schedule. And the reason behind that is, is to make it as much of a one-on-one -on -one walk as possible. Mm -hmm. So for students who think that their job is to simply attend class, memorize facts, and then just spit it back out, mm -hmm. uh, the education that's offered in Europe, North America, Japan, can be a little different. Mm -hmm. and, and it is crucial because that is what we have offered. It's crucial that students engage in that. Mm -hmm. um, so office hours are there uh, precisely to ensure that students have the opportunity to have a discussion. It's a discussion comprehension model, mm -hmm. not a talk at memorize model. Absolutely. It's, that's different in that way. So would you say that uh, a part of the learning uh, process or learning experience in Canada, let's say, is to actually ask questions and to communicate and interact with your uh, instructors. Yes, okay. yes, and you have to understand I teach within the business program. Mm -hmm. So within Canadian universities you have two, um, within Canadian universities and business schools, mm -hmm. you have two kinds of instruction. Yeah. You have the instruction by, by professors with doctoral degrees mm -hmm. and then you have instruction by practitioners within the field. Mm -hmm. So I run my own company, this is one of my customers, I have a number of customers, and I work with companies to help them get into new markets. Yeah. Um, that experience I then bring to the classroom. So I will discuss the theory and the principle and then give applications from uh, the actual functions within the economy. Mm -hmm. There is simply not enough time in scheduled classes to fully explore the kinds of, of themes we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, in some cultures, coming to the professor is an indication that the professor has somehow failed. Mm -hmm. That if, if the professor was doing their job, classroom instruction would be all that there was. Mm -hmm. That's fine for a, for a learning style where it's just, I tell you and you stick it in your head and show me you mm -hmm. have. But that's not what we offer. Here. Yeah. So you, the, this is this is an intention to have a conversation, yeah. to have a conversation with people who have spent a great deal of time to get a doctoral degree mm -hmm. and are technical specialists in these things, or to spend a fair amount of time with somebody who's who's working directly with senior management within companies or is themselves senior management, mm -hmm. um, and that way they can explain how it works in in the actual um, application in the actual in the real world. Yeah. That's not true in every discipline for, for students from Saudi Arabia that are, that are coming for English or philosophy or mathematics. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be a f uh, their experience will be a bit different, but within the business school that's how we work. Mm -hmm. We also uh, try to make it as accessible as possible within Canadian culture. There are, there are some limits as to how much we try to accommodate students where they're at mm -hmm. because they have paid for a Canadian education and we have offered a Canadian education, we are, we are obliged to offer a Canadian education. Uh, so you will find many professors anticipate, uh, expect to be called by their first names, the, the, the deference and the power type of positions 
are, are not um, part of the Canadian experience to the same degree. So if we're discussing a concept that the student may, may find some aspects understandable and some aspects difficult, um, it's good to get to, to start not at the very beginning but to but the piece that you want some more information on. Start there. This is this is what I understand but there's this piece that I didn't quite quite follow you on. Or, I believe that this means these things. Is that the case? Those are the two main ways. To lead up with the piece you understand and ask for a ex uh, further explanation of the piece you do not, or to deliver what you think it means and test that. Okay? Th that's, that's typically how, uh, how we do it. I will suggest though, in addition to office hours, there, there is, and I'm going to just speak about the business program, because you, you need to understand that my perspective is within the field I teach. All students, Canadian, Saudi, Chinese, whoever, all students will benefit from forming study groups because the study group gets the student to explain to other students their understanding of this thing. And share their knowledge. Share their knowledge. And uh, as they test their understanding, and somebody else may say, well, hold on, I think it means this other thing. Yeah. Uh, then you get a chance for discussion in there. Uh, typically, the, the instructor will not be the study group. You, you won't get access to the kind of time. Yeah. Uh, in the coming semester, I will have about 300 students. So there's no way I have two hours a week for each student. Yeah. Okay? So, so it, does not, um, it does not replace the study group. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I think you have to understand is that study groups work best when they're not everybody from the same background. Yeah. Uh, so if you're, if you're coming in to a study group, maybe you're bringing a friend. Mm -hmm. But if all seven or eight people within the study group are from one background, yeah. then you, there's at least a reasonable chance you may be missing something. Absolutely. So, uh, and, and the, other, the other piece that I would strongly recommend uh, is that as much as possible switch into an English operating mode. Mm -hmm. The students that I have seen have most success at a university are the students that when, when their peers were walking around speaking in Mandarin or in, in Arabic or in, in Finnish, mm -hmm. um, they didn't do that. They, and if they were asked a question in their native language, they answered back in English. Mm -hmm because they were here to move to the point where they're thinking in English. Mm -hmm. and, and I've done this. I've had to move into a Spanish setting where I was thinking in Spanish, speaking in Spanish, writing in Spanish. And when I got to that place, it became much, much, much easier. But I couldn't do that as long as I walked around talking English. Mm -hmm. I had to move into Spanish. So, so that's the other piece that this fits in.